Greetings and welcome to another Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team video review where today I'm going over the Nemesis Claw Kill Team from Kill Team Nightmare. But before it goes into things, thanks goes first to Games Workshop for providing this to review for free. As always, I try to be honest, impartial and constructively critical. And also please remember to like and subscribe as well as comment. Let me know what you thought of this review and this Kill Team. And remember I've got a Discord you can check down for free in the episode description below. An affiliate link at Element Games and a Patreon link if you want to give me some more support too. But yeah, let's get on with the video. So this is the Nemesis Claw Kill Team, which you can find in Kill Team Nightmare, which I will have a review of. You can check it on the channel and in the episode description below. But let's go over this Kill Team and how it plays. So the Nemesis Claw Kill Team has the archetypes of Infiltration, Recon and Seek and Destroy, which at this point, why didn't you just give them all four archetypes? Personally, I would have just given them Infiltration and Seek. Recon doesn't really fit with the Night Lords. It just feels more like what the playtesters or the game design team thought would be best for this kill team, which might be a running trend with Nightmare as a whole. But you have your leader who can either have a bolt pistol and power weapon, bolt pistol and power maul, bolt pistol and power fist, or plasma pistol and chain blade. Then you've got five other operatives, so you effectively have a six operative kill team. The kill team has the general abil ability of in midnight clad, so when determining if a friendly operative is in an enemy operative's line of sight, that friendly operative is obscured if all the following are true. It has a conceal order, it's within black of heavy or light terrain, and or any of its part of, of, of its base is underneath a vantage point. It's more than red from the enemy operative it's visible to. This ability, while kinda good, is way, way too hard to use because you have to have all three, right? So you can kind of say like, oh, technically it's quite easy to have all three from the start of the turn. But I think if you just had two or more from the traits, it would be fine. Or even just one. Because if you had two or more, you could go, you could deploy and engage within cover and more than red from enemy operatives, or just light and in cover and closer. It's just, it's not a bad ability. It's just kind of so many boxes to tick that you actually won't get much use out of it, which is just frustrating. So for TAC Ops, you have So Terror, revealed at the, the start of any target reveal step. If a friendly operative incapacitates an enemy operative within its engagement range and that is on an objective and uh, in your opponent's territory and not on the center line, you score one VP. And if you do it again, you score another. This is kind of way, way too situational. Just just take route. Uh, then you've got Dread Tail Dark Rumor. Score this at the end of the battle. If a friendly operative is within red of your opponent's kill zone edge and within red of an enemy operative. Now, this actually is actually not too bad because you can just leave someone alive and stalk them, but it does require more planning. It's quite good to get one off, but it's a win more tack op. So it's probably the best one, but it's not amazing. Then you've got Hunt the Weak. Reveal this sit during any target reveal step. If a friendly operative incapacitates an enemy operative within its engagement range that has an unmodified wound characteristic of seven and is more than red from all other enemy operatives, you score one VP. And then if you do it again in another turning point, you score another. This is kind of just really 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 restrictive i think you could have just removed the wounds characteristic and just said anything like 10 or less it's way too situational considering there's hardly any seven wound teams in the game anymore even making it eight would have been better but i think personally dread tail dark rumor is the best although you're probably just going to go all recon all seek and destroy for strategic ploys you have nightmare manifest for one cp until the end of the turning point friendly operatives perform two fight actions during the activation or two shoot actions during the activation if a bolt weapon is selected for at least one of those shooting attacks. So it's actually a more less restrictive double fight, double shoot, because you can still shoot, fight, fight, or fight, shoot, shoot. But obviously you're probably going to shoot, fight, fight if you are, but it's just an easy way to combine double fight, double shoot, which is good. Then we have we have come for you for one CP until the end of the turning point each time a friendly operative is activated. The first time it falls a charge action after it finishes the action, you can select one enemy operative with an engagement range to suffer D3 wounds, well, mortal wounds. So this is actually really good and synergizes with a lot of the kill team's operatives. So usually you're going to pop this just turning point two or three, but a pretty good uh, strategic ploy there. Then we have Prey Sight until the end of the turning point when determined line of sight to each friendly Nemesis Claw operative Enemy operatives within red are treated to have a gauge order unless they are in cover from heavy terrain. For one CP, this is okay, but you're mainly a melee kill team, so you're not really going to use Prey Sight considering you're not going to have many gunners. It's all right, 
but I wouldn't really rate it. Then you have the Black Hunt for 1 CP until the end of the turning point. Each time a friendly operative fights in combat or makes a shooting attack against an enemy operative that has less than the starting number of wounds at the start of the combat or shooting attack, you can reroll one of your attack dice. So the Black Hunt combos really well with We Have Come For You because you charge into someone, do the D3 mortal wounds, and now when you fight them, you get to reroll an attack dice. Also nice that it works with your shooting operatives as well. That's a really, really good ploy because this team unintentionally has a lot of ways to chip operatives. And especially if you're doing double fight, you can go fight once, not get any rerolls, and then the second fight, get rerolls or the same with shooting. So really good there. Then for tactical ploys, out of the darkness for one CP, use this at the end of the scouting step. One friendly operative wholly within your drop zone can perform a free normal move with up to two white as if, the, if they can fly. And remember, because this is before the game begins, effectively, you could spend this three times because you're a free CP to effectively move three operatives four inches up the board, which is really good for applying pressure. Like this is just great no matter what. Really strong there. Then you've got Vox Scream for 1 CP+. Plus. Use this when your opponent would activate an enemy operative. Your opponent cannot activate the operative this activation. If there are no enemy operatives eligible to be activated, this has no effect. And it costs one additional point each time you would use it. Incredibly powerful considering this just has no range. So especially if your opponent's trying to alpha strike you at the start of a, a turning point, you can just go, nope, you can't activate the operative and then they have to activate someone else, which is so powerful. And you can do some dirty tricks with that when you see the rest of the operatives. Then you've got Death to the False Emperor for 1 CP. Use this after rolling an attack dice for combat or shooting made by a friendly operative. If the enemy operative has a Imperium keyword, in the roll attack dice step of combat or shooting, you can reroll any or all your results of 1. Easy, e.g. if you rolled like two twos, you'd reroll both twos. If it has the Adaptus Astartes keyword, you can reroll any or all of your attack dice. So you basically get relentless against certain operatives. Really, it's not as good as Veterans of the Long War, where you just get to reroll everything. But if you if your attack failed, but it's still pretty good. Then you've got Proclivity for Murder for one CP. Use this after a friendly operative incapacitates an enemy operative within its engagement raid engagement range. That friendly operative can immediately perform a free charge action up to blue or free dash action, even if it has performed that action during that act activation that prevents it from charging or dashing. So you can actually pretend you're corn and effectively charge, kill someone, spend a CP to dash again and fight again, or, you know, just move, shoot, dash, well, move, dash, shoot, and then dash again. So really flexible, really powerful tactical ploys we have here. For operatives, we have your Night Lord Vision Visionary. So everyone is effectively 12 wounds, 3 APL and a 3 up save. He has 13 because he's your leader. Guns are the same and the melee weapons are okay. You're basically always going to take Plasma Pistol and Chain Blade. It's just disappointing the Chain Blade is only 5 attacks, hitting on 2, 4, 5 with Rending. I would have liked it to have Lethal 5 up or even Brutal, like something, you know, even Lethal 4 up. That would have been cool. It For an Ostraman Chain Blade, it feels pretty weak considering these are like known for being brutal and incredibly damaging. Just having Rending just feels kind of moot. But outside of that, his abilities are amazing. And this is no matter what loadout you take. So you've got Prey Sense. So once you're in the strategic phase, or well, each strategic phase, when it's your turn to use a ploy or pass, you can use this ability instead. If you do, you add D3 Prey Sense tokens to your pool, and your Prey Sense tokens are spelled on abilities and unique actions on this data card, but you cannot spend them if he's dead. So you've got Foreboding. In the Firefight phase, when it's your turn to activate a friendly ready operative, you can discard one of your Prey Sense tokens to skip that activation. Then you've got Portent. Once per turning point, when this operative fights in combat or shoot attack is made against it, at the start of the resolve successful hit steps, you can discard one of your Prey Sense tokens to discard one of your opponent's successful hits. And then Premonition for 1 AP, Psychic Action, discard one of your Prey Sense tokens to gain an ACP, and you cannot perform this action while with an engagement range of an enemy operative. So he also has a Psyker. So Prey Sense is incredibly powerful, and the only thing keeping it in check is that you could just roll ones. You could only get one Prey Sense token every turning point, which makes this ability kind of rubbish. But when you're rolling free, it's kind of insane. Full Boding is worth holding. Like, if you roll free Prey Sense tokens, it's almost worth holding them. So if you roll turning point two, you roll another free. You can delay six activations because you can just keep doing Prey Sense. Like, I, I mean, Full Boding, I'm surprised Full Boding isn't once per turning point. But I'm also not happy with Full Boding because it, the, a problem elite kill teams have is their activation number. And instead of addressing that for every kill team, they've just gone for this kill team in particular, which worries me going forward for kill team 
but also feels like power creep because now they have an automatic edge against every other elite team. And personally, you'll see as we go through the review, but Night Lords, the Nemesis Claw are the best elite team. And it's not even just because of this, but this is a huge part. Portent is also huge. It's basically a once per turning point just to scratch. But ideally, my main tactic is if I need to, I will do Premonition turning point one. But if I only roll one Prey Sense token, I'll hold on to it. If you roll two, you can afford using Premonition. But even if you roll three, you may go, do I need to use Premonition? Because going into turning point two with six Prey Sense tokens is so important, so huge. Like you could just stall out for six activations. Crazy. But it's a good operative which isn't going to be great in melee or shooting, like his plasma starts on twos, which is amazing, but his abilities is what makes him so crucial. Then you have your Fearmonger. He has a scoped bot pistol, which is four, hey, not four attacks in on freeze, three, four, range, red, lethal five up, or long range, which is just a bolt gun, because his pistol, he just imagines it goes really far. Then he's got Terra Chem Vial, which is five attacks in on freeze, two, zero, range red, blast white, indirect, limited, no cover. And then for every crit, you do three mortal wounds with Terra Chem. And then you've got a Tainted Blade, which is five attacks in on freeze, three, five, and Terra Chem. So Terra Chem, each time this operative fights in combat or makes a shooting attack with this weapon, in the resolve success or hit step of that combat or shooting attack, the first time you resolve a critical hit or critical strike, the enemy operative gains one of your Terra Chem tokens until the end of the battle if it doesn't already have one. So the only you won't you can't put multiple Terra Chem tokens on an enemy operative. They'll just only get one. So Terra Chem Poison. In the ready operative step of each initiative phase, enemy operatives with Terra Chem tokens suffer D3 mortal wounds, roll separately for each, even this if, if this operative has been incapacitated. So just chip damage. Then you've got Poison Objective for 1 AP. Select one objective marker this operative controls that doesn't have a Terra Chem token. It gains one of your Terra Chem tokens. The first time an enemy operative without a Terra Chem token moves in one of that marker, it suffers D3 mortal wounds and then gains a Terra Chem token until the end of the battle. And you cannot perform this while in against range of enemy operatives. So the Fearmonger is really good, especially if you scout him up the board. He can move to one of your unsafe objectives, capture them, Terra Chem it, and then the opponent will take D3 mortal wounds. And the next turning point will take another D3 mortal wounds. So really good there. He's a nice chip damage and really pushes you over the edge into elite kill teams, but is great against Tords as well with his kind of crazy frag grenade. It's not going to kill stuff, but it might make sure they die at the start of the next turning point if they're seven wounds. So he's a really key support operative. Then you've got your gunner who can take a flamer melter or plasma gun. You're just going to take the plasma gun most of the time and you will need to take your gunner. Then you've got your heavy gunner who can only take the heavy bolter and missile launcher. And because of this, because it can't take a rotor cannon, I don't really rate the heavy gunner. I mean, you may get use out of the heavy bolter or the missile launcher that like you still have on the roster, but personally, I would never run the heavy gunner, especially if you can't take the rotary cannon that legionary have, which is so good. Then you've got the screecher, the discord warrior made life or redditor made life. Um, so there's 12 wounds, right? And he's got lightning claws. So five attacks, he on freeze, four, five, lethal five up relentless. So he is screecher. So he rees all the time. While this operative is within blue of an enemy operative, worsen the ballistic skill and weapon skill characteristic of that enemy operative by one. This is not cumulative with being injured. So he just screams so much. And then he's got an appetite for cruelty. Each time this operative fights in combat as the active operative, if the target has less than its starting number of wounds remaining at the start of that combat, your lightning claws get lethal four up instead of lethal five up. So when combined with your ploy that does D3 more wounds on the charge, or if they've been terra chemmed, all of a sudden he's effectively two hitting anything with 10 wounds or less, which is incredibly powerful. Really, really good there. Like he is um, like when he's charging wounded stuff, amazing. And even when he's not, he's OK because they're going to be hitting at minus one to hit. So it's really good operative here. Then you've got your skin thief. So he has a bolt pistol somewhere and an Australian chain glaive, which is five attacks hitting on freeze, four, six, reap one, rending. Notably a better chain glaive, chain glaive. Well, I guess it's a chain blade, whatever. It's fine. He's got a big chain sword. So he is like what the butcher wanted to be. This is like the cooler butcher. So he's got flay them alive. Once per turning point, when this operative incapacitates an enemy operative within its engagement range, select one other enemy operative visible and within red. Until the end of the turning point, until the start of the next turning point, that op enemy operative cannot perform mission actions or the pickup actions or control objective markers. So it's like the hand of the Archon one from the Bloodborne Duelist, but not as good because every time they kill someone, 
they can do this effect. You can only do this once. So even if you kill two different operatives in combat, you only trigger flay them alive once. Then you've got Tyrants of the Skinning Pits. Each time this operative fights in combat, subtract one from the damage characteristics of both of their profiles for their weapons down to a minimum of two, which makes the Night Lord Skin Thief insane. Like, I, he, he makes elites struggle to kill him and like horde-like kill teams almost impossible to kill him. They need so many options to kill him in combat. He's amazing. Like, he's literally like the butcher who's gotten a promotion. Amazing. Always take the skin thief. Such a good operative. Probably too good. Like, he could have just been four attacks or even five attacks hitting on fours. Five attacks hitting on threes with this profile is kind of insane, but still really good. Then you've got the Ventrilo car, who, who seems to have the same leagues of Votan wording. So he has a bolt pistol and chain sword, five attacks hitting on threes, four, five. He's a psyker and he has the icon bear ability. So he counts as. When you're controlling an objective, your total pool counts as one APL higher. So effectively four APL for objectives. But the key thing about this guy is his disconcerting mimicry. Well, mimicry. So for one AP, it's a psychic action. Select one enemy operative within red of this operative. Then select one of the following for that enemy operative. You can only select each option once per battle. Subtract one from its APL. Change its order. Perform a free dash action with it and specify to the location for your opponent to move it. And this operative cannot perform this action while in engagement range. So this is insane. Now people may go, oh, I'll just move and dash and then change someone's order. But the key thing here is actually turning point one, like even like moving and dashing on an activated operative and then making them dash out of combat because it's way better than changing their order. But the funniest thing you can do, you can even like, he can cap the point at the start of a turning point use this to make them dash into charge range and then charge them or make them dash out into cover and then move away right and then when they try and activate that operative you can spend a cp to scream to stop them activating that operative so then they have to activate someone else so it's so cruel like it's great it it's such a powerful thing and like it's good as cap to once per game because effectively turning point one or two you're going to do the free dash action then change order and then you might do the free Minus one APL. I wouldn't really use the minus one APL. Like the free dash action is huge. So powerful, but an amazing operative. And then you just have your normal warrior who can take either a bolt pistol, bolt gun, or chain sword or fists. And you won't, won't really be taking these. Then for equipment, you have flayed skin for two equipment points. While this operative is visible and within blue of an enemy operative, you cannot reroll attack dice or defense dice for that enemy. Your opponent can't reroll those attack dice or defense dice. It's... Flash, flashlights have nothing on flayed skin. It's uh, it's crazy. Uh, and also you can't take it if operatives have grizzly trophies. So shutting down rerolls is huge. Like you just put this on your super butcher and all of a sudden you just shut people down. Crazy. So powerful. Then you've got grizzly trophy. You can't have grizzly trophy with flayed skin. This is just the same thing as in legionary where your minus one attacks for while you're within blue of this operative. Incredibly powerful. Chain snare is just for one EP on a four up, they can't fall back. But if they pass, if they fail, they don't get their they get their AP refunded. Then you have a suspenser system for free equipment points, where basically you can, you have the cumbersome rule, which is okay for your heavy weapons, but you're never really going to take them. Your combat blade is two uh, one equipment point four attacks hitting on freeze three five, which is okay. Then you have a frag and crack. Generally, I actually a lot of the time don't take the crack grenade and instead take free flayed skin and the grizzly trophy or if you're taking the crack grenade i would go grizzly trophy crack grenade and then two flayed skins but flay skinned is so powerful and it's just such a good thing to have and it's got a quite big bubble so you can even have like two operatives bodyguarding two other operatives so it like it makes the elite matchup so easy but great set of equipment here i'm disappointed they got grizzly trophy because it basically means I know it's probably like a shared equipment for now, legionary, like Chaos Space Marines, but it's just disappointing. It's like, it's basically them telling you don't play legionary anymore, which is not great. Then you've got your standard narrative rules as well. So you've got a full set of narrative rules for this kill team if you want to use them. So overall, this kill team is great. Like it's really powerful. My only problem, like it's really thematic. Like this plays how Night Lords should play. And as you can see, I've got my hair long for the night lords because i'm also an emo marine too my only problem is this kill team feels incredibly power crept this it has mechanics and abilities that feel like they've been tuned because games workshop 
or the design team, you know, want this kill team to be good. And like my biggest gripe is how it has mechanics that specifically address the problems elite kill teams have. But instead of making this a general game thing, they've locked it behind the kill team. So for example, with the prey sense tokens being able to delay an activation, the fact it isn't capped and going into turning point two, you could theoretically delay six times, which massively helps the problem elite teams have, but it's only locked into this kill team. And the Nemesis Claw are the best elite kill, elite, uh, elite kill team in the game right now. The fact they effectively have all four, all three archetypes that are good because they like security isn't that great anymore. It feels like they are purposely power crept and that you want to play them as an elite player, which is just disappointing. I'm not a fan of our, like kill teams having free archetypes, especially when you give them these free archetypes. Like recon really doesn't make sense for Night Lords. Just give them infiltration and seek and destroy. It would have toned them down a lot more, but it just like, if you're going to give more kill teams, those three archetypes, just give them all four. You might as well give every kill team four archetypes at this point. So it's a really good kill team. And I like the mechanics it have. It has a lot of synergy. Operatives are really fun. It's a great melee kill team. Their unique ability is weird. Like it needs an FAQ. Because for example, if I'm on a vantage point shooting down at a Nemesis Claw operative who is within like black of heavy cover on a conceal order and more than red from me, they're fine, like if their back is to heavy cover, right? Because they will be within an inch. The moment I put a barricade there, because Vantage switches them to engage, now their ability doesn't work. So that's just an FAQ that needs happening. But it's just a weird ability that is like, if it just needed two or more of the ability, like bullet points to meet, that would be great. Free feels too restrictive, but it's a good kill team, like really fun to play. And I think it's going to do really well. As I said, I actually like it. I It's really want, making me want to play elite kill teams. My main gripe is it just feels like obvious power creep. And they're not broken. I don't think they're broken. I think they're really good. They have a lot of powerful key, like key things. Their equipment is great. The internal balance is good. And I don't think people are going to have a bad time playing against them because it's still just six operatives, right? And they're a bit swingy with their prey sense tokens and they're quite CP hungry. And if they're using their prey sense tokens to gain CP, they have less prey sense tokens to delay. And like the models are great. Like if you see my models, I actually, hopefully they won Warhammer community. But I used uh, the Horus Heresy Mark III Marines as the bodies because I basically have a legionary Mark VI Alpha Legion. So these are my Alpha Legion Nemesis Claw. And effectively, I can now just use the Heavy Gunners for my legionary in my Nemesis Claw. But it works. The kit works really well with the Mark III armor. For the Butcher guy, I just shaved down the chest and glued it on. But that works really well. I just like the kit works so much better because I'm not a fan of the normal Chaos Space Marine kit because of all the trim. So, but I like the models are great. The kill team is great. I'm just worried about the future of kill team because season like uh, Salvation was a great box. I think it was well balanced. Everything looked quite reined in. This is very worrying. Like, as I said, does this mean the activation issue that they're aware of is not going to be addressed going forwards, especially when we get next edition of kill team, like for elite kill teams, because this kill team shuts down other elite kill teams, even like their hardest opponent is legionary but they have more tricks than legionary so it's just weird like it, it's not like a bad thing it's kind of like i'm concerned what's going to happen going forwards and the thing is i think people are going to sleep on how powerful this kill team actually is because of all the positional tricks it has but i think it's going to be a lot of fun and i can't wait to see how people play with them because people who are really good with positional players are going to love night lords like it's tempting me so much to play this elite kill team go back to elites because i was actually having so much fun with elites and i think you will have a lot of fun if you're an elite player looking for that oomph again you'll definitely get it with the nemesis claw but that's pretty much it from me today please remember to like and subscribe as well as comment let me know what you thought of this video and review remember i have an article version down in the episode description below as well as a review of nightmare itself I remember I've got a Discord you can check out for free down in the episode description below and a fill link out in games, which will give you 10 or well, 15 to 25% off at no additional cost to yourself while helping to support me and the channel. And also I have a Patreon if you want to give me some more support and I'll quickly shout out my patrons. So for my adepts of the crit, I have Tom, Super Cow, Sam, Nick, Kenzie, John Thomas, Graham, Freeman, Dave Meets World, Dad of Goldens, Ben, and for my veterans of the crit, I have Sam Jizz. So thank you so much for your support. It really means a lot to me and helps support the channel. 
But yeah, as I said, I'll have my Nightmare review along with my Mandrake review and with the Nemesis Claw review. So hopefully you enjoy them all. It's a really fun release. Uh, it is, uh, as I said, concerning for me. And when I was speaking to some other reviewers, we're kind of like, yeah, I mean, Salvation made us like quite comfortable with where the game was going. But Nightmare, we're kind of now worried because if you listen to the videos they, they previewed for Termination, the Termination team sound even more power crept. So it's we're kind of concerned going forward, but it's not like, oh no, the game's in danger. It's just kind of like, we, we need to keep an eye and hope for the best. But until next time, remember, no matter what happens in the shadows of Kill Team, you're always going to win as long as you can roll a crit.